So now, question number 26. Hormones and the nervous system both control our bodies. Which statement about the control provided by our hormones is correct? Hormones, so you need to remember the hormones are always slow, but since they are slow, they have a good thing that means they last for a very long period of time. Now let's see the options you have fast response and long lasting, fast response and short lived. So these two definitely cannot be because hormones they don't provide fast, but in fact it's a nervous system that gives a fast response and it's short lived. So now they're asking about hormones, so it needs to be slow response and long lasting. Right. So auxin is a chemical produced by plants. It controls plant growth. Which statement about auxin is correct? Auxin affects the cells only where it is made known. Auxin is equally distributed in response to light from one direction. Not really. Auxin elongates the cells in the shoot tip. No. It doesn't elongate in the shoot tip. It elongates in another part of the plant. Auxin is made in the shoot tip. Auxin does not elongate the cells in the shoot tip. It elongates that part of the plant where there is light and it elongates in the opposite direction of the light okay so it's actually made in the shoe tip so this is like the correct statement now how do some antibiotics kill bacteria they damage the cell wall they damage the er and the plasma reticulum they damage the nucleus no they damage the protein called that's for the virus but still no so definitely got the cell wall because bacteria has cell wall and that if you note the viruses they do not have a cell wall so antibiotics they don't affect viruses because viruses do not have a cell wall however bacteria they do have a cell wall some statements about asexual reproduction are listed offspring are genetically identical offspring are genetically different only one parent is required two parents are required which statements are correct now that they're asking about asexual reproduction so offspring are genetically identical this is like the first thing it can't be genetically different it's only for sexual reproduction but the question is now asking for asexual so yeah, the offspring are genetically identical meaning they're literally the same and only one parent is required yes this is true two parents are required no two parents are only required when they sexual reproduction so it's going to be one and three which types of contact between humans can spread hiv blood transfusion sexual intercourse larva so if you see per, like you know this one you think it's probably all because you, you need a medium for the virus to transfer or like the thing but in reality for hiv you need to know that the most common one is only blood when you're using the injection you might use the same syringe for probably like two or five people so that's how hiv can spread or doing sexual, inter doing sexual intercourse where um you know and uh, but saliva is not the case because um, you just can't transfer HIV via saliva it's just too um, it just doesn't make sense to saliva at all so it's definitely got to be one and two only now which method of birth control works by preventing an egg from being released now that they're asking about birth control preventing an egg from being released condom no condom is just a prevention eggs can still be released and condom is actually for men it's not for women for women it's the diaphragm thing so it's definitely not a contraceptive pill yes monitoring body temperature no this still allows the egg to release vasectomy In vasectomy, it's where the sperm duct is cut and the abduct is also cut as well. But when it's cut, um, it doesn't really prevent the egg from being released. Eggs are still released, it's just that they can't be transported to reach the uterus. So to prevent an egg from being released, it needs to be a contraceptive pill because in this case, there is... Um, when an, when an egg is required to be released there is a function of the luteinizing hormone 
as well as the estrogen and the progesterone taking part but um, if you use a contraceptive pill if you consume a contraceptive pill these all three they don't um, they just they don't really allow an egg to be released from the from the place where it's usually released which is um, near the fallopian tube or the orbiduct you can see right so now what is defined as a thread like structure of dna carrying genetic information in the form of genes so now if you read the syllabus of this chapter you can see that a thread like structure is always a chromosome so you need to know directly that it's referring to the chromosome now the statements describe steps in protein synthesis now if you see one copies of the gene are carried to the cytoplasm as mrna molecules each ribosome assembles amino acids into protein molecule. The gene coding for a protein is copied in the nucleus. The mRNA molecules pass through the ribosome. So now, if you see the sequences, the okay. first one is... So you have this, which is 1, and you have is 3. So um, you have this... Okay, so you have one and three. So you need to decide which one is from this copies of gene are carried up cytoplasm. Mm, the gene coding for protein is copied in the nucleus. So if you actually remember the process, it's actually this one, the gene coding, 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 coding. So it has to be this, the gene coding for protein is copied in the nucleus and then followed by this. Copies of the gene are carried to the cytoplasm as mRNA molecules, and then the mRNA molecules pass through the ribosomes, and then you have each ribosome assembles amino acids into protein molecule. So this definitely, if you see the sequence, it definitely got to be C, because the last one, which is each ribosome assembled, the assembling part is the last one. All right, and then the first one is the gene coding thing. So you can just somehow make a conclusion which one is the correct sequence. Now, a sunflower has 17 chromosomes in each pollen nucleus. These nuclei are produced by the process of dash in the anthers. They are genetically dash. All the pollen nuclei produced by these anthers after fertilization. The resulting zygote will have dash chromosomes. Which row correctly completes gaps 1, 2 and 3? So these nuclei are produced by the process of, okay now, if you see properly, you are given the option of meiosis and mitosis. Now that it's, it's to do with pollen, that means it's with the sexual cells. Sexual cells meaning it has to be related with the meiosis, it cannot be mitosis. Because this is the diagram you need to remember, if it's meiosis, it involves the creation of eggs and sperm cells okay now this is for humans for plants it's the pollen oh, oh my god <laughs> for plants it's actually the um for plants it's actually the, the pollen and the ovule that's the the sex cells for the plants so it definitely meiosis is taking place and if you see now they are genetically dash old pollen nuclei produced by those anthers so now that if it's meiosis and you're using both the sexual cells that means the offspring needs to be different and that after fertilization the resulting zygote will double meaning because those sex cells which is the pollen and the ovule they only have half like you can just say the pollen has 17 and the ovule has another 17 so after fertilization you get the seed or you can just say the zygote that contains a total of 17 and 17 you have a total of 34 so it's going to be of 34 chromosomes so this is how you can remember and this is that one table that's really helpful for you to remember meiosis involves four daughter cells mitosis two daughter cells but the main difference is meiosis it's related with the sex cells 
only and mitosis is for the rest of the cells of the body and another difference is that um, if it's sex cells you need to remember that the offspring are always different they're not the same it creates haploid and that is four haploid daughter cells whereas mitosis two daughter cells creation of diploid daughter cells and yeah so now a man heterozygous for the sickle cell anemia allele HBS HPA has children with this woman who is homozygous for the normal hemoglobin allele HPA HPA what is the probability of the first child this is actually a very really simple diagram we just have to draw and construct it in the table like this HPS HPA 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 we just know if it's A S A A like the one bracket there's actually not the correct way of drawing it in a bracket but since I don't have the option to raise the thing on top so I'm making the bracket to differentiate it and because this is the one we're supposed to be calculating it out and uh, this is A, this is S, this is A, and this is A so if you see here A, S this is literally 0 0.5 like half and this is another half A, A means the person is completely normal no anemia at all A, S meaning it's sickle cell anemia and if the person has sickle cell anemia meaning the person resisted to malaria and now this is half and this is a half so the answer is going to be 0 0.5 right now which leaf feature is an adaptation of xerophytes to their environment so now that it's xerophytes it's got to be hot so it's in a very hot environment so which leaf feature now they're asking features of leaves so here's the surrounding stomata large internal polar spaces, large numbers of stomata, definitely not large numbers because that literally reduces water loss from the leaf. Thin cuticle on both surfaces that will actually reduce the water loss. So this C and D is definitely not correct. B, large internal hole spaces, um, doesn't make sense actually. So it definitely got to be here surrounding the stomata because this actually has an important function for the reduction of water loss from the leaf. Yeah, it's just like, you know, if you go to desert, you have the cactus, you have those thick, the, the spiky things. Those are basically hairs of, I, I won't say hairs. I wouldn't be saying it's hairs of stomata, it's actually the hairs, like, basically they're those spiky things, they're basically those leaves. But just as an analogy that you might understand is that, in a zero fight, which is in a very hot environment, they're here surrounding the stomata actually to reduce as much as water possible from the plant because there is very scarce of water in the hot environment, so the plants try their best to uh, not lose that. So, this is like one adaptation of hair surrounding the stomata. Now, the graph shows a change in the population of organism over time in the ecosystem. Now this whole thing you gotta memorize what is in this, what's in this, what's in this, what's in this, what's in this. there's no sense understanding this. You just need to memorize what is in what. So now, this is the first thing which they didn't mention now, they wanted to find in X, Y, and Z. So X definitely it gotta be the exponential one because it's log phase, Y is a stationary one where nothing happens at all and Z is a death phase. So this is how it is. Now, the diagram shows the structure of a bacterium. The present of structure X is one reason why bacteria are used in genetic engineering. What is structure X? So now that they are talking about bacteria using in genetic engineering is definitely plasmid because this is like the one very essential feature that helps in the genetic engineering process. Right now, when nitrates enter a lake, they cause rapid growth of algae on the surface of the water. This causes the following changes in the lake. The concentration of dissolved oxygen in the water decreases, fish and other aquatic animals die, aerobic respiration decomposes, decrease, producers die and decomposition increases. So in which order, this is a very simple one to remember, just remember that the first that happens in the, um, if I'm not mistaken, this is actually the, the eutrophication pr process. I'm not sure if, pr if I'm pronouncing this correct, but that's how I say it, it's eutrophication. So in eutrophication, the first thing that happens is that the producers, which are literally the plants in the water, they die 
and the decomposing bacteria, the bacteria decomposing bacteria that feed on the plants they increase in number and then when there is a lot of decomposing bacteria that means the process aerobic respiration also increases and when that increases oxygen is reduced from the water so when there's reduced oxygen in the water the organs i want to organs or organs i mean organisms in the under the water they all die so the first thing that, that that dies are plants which are the producers then the the decompo the decomposing bacteria grow when they grow they use arabic respiration when arabic respiration is being used oxygen concentration is reduced and when oxygen concentration is being reduced then the organisms under the water they die because they need oxygen to survive so if you see all of this related and if you see the sequence is definitely got to be d now the action of which type of bacteria would cause soil to be lacking in nitrates now that it's about lacking in nitrates you need to remember this process which is like the whole nitrogen cycle and if it's talking about uh, lacking in nitrates so if you see over here you have denitrifying nitrifying nitrogen fix and modification so now that they ask about lack of nitrogen meaning there are no nitrates present in the soil so it definitely it got to be the denitrifying bacteria so um it the answer is going to be b so um, that's all for our mcq paper for february march 2021 and um if you guys think there was something wrong in the explanation then just let me know in the comments down below and if you guys really understood and if you liked the whole explanation then do like and subscribe so that i can continue to provide an amazing content and good explanation for furthermore past papers until then stay tuned for our next past paper Bye.